G'day football fans and welcome to episode 9 of our Wolves career mode here on Dylan on the Ball. My name is Dylan and today we will be taking on the young guns of Arsenal Football Club with all of their power, pace and potential. We did verse them not too long ago in the last video you would have seen uh, in the highlights package. We did lose 4-2 away at Arsenal so we're looking for a little bit of revenge today. Since you were last year we have played four fixtures, two in the FA Cup, two in the league. Uh, but before we get to the highlights of those, I will just remind you, please leave a like down below. Uh, subscribe if you're into this series, if you're new around here and you're liking what we're doing. Uh, leave a comment down below, any feedback you might have, any transfer targets you might uh, think we should have a look at as we look towards next season. And of course the socials are down in the description below. But now that's out of the road, let's get to the highlights. We've got six minutes of them to get through, so here we go. So first game we were away at Ipswich in the cup. It was Fabio Silva getting us underway with not the greatest finish you'll ever see, not the best piece of goalkeeping you'll ever see. But with the run of fixtures we have been having, the uh, amount of back and forth goals, we will take that to start the game. Then about half an hour in, it was Fabio Silva added again. It was also the goalkeeper added again with a, let's say, sloppy effort. Just put it out in front of himself for a bit of room. Took it on his weak foot, trying to curl it into that far bottom corner. Bit close to the keeper there. Then got better after the half. It was Nelson Smedo getting down to the byline. Chopping it back for Trinchow, who had freed himself up around the penalty spot. And powers a header in off the post. Leaving the keeper with no chance. You can't blame the keeper this time around for 3-0. Three then became four, it was Huang down the left hand side, using his pace, cutting back onto his good foot, having drawn the defender in, and placing this one past the keeper into the far, far side netting. Four then became five, it was Trin Chow who cut inside onto his good foot, having drawn the defenders in, saw a little gap uh, between the two of them, split the difference, and put a nice little finish into the bottom corner. So 5-0, we progress in the FA Cup. We then hosted uh, Southampton. It was Huang getting us underway early on here. Ross Barkley drew in the defenders. And you can see the run Huang has made there off the ball, busting a gut to get himself into the box. And on the end of the pass from Ross Barkley to fire us into a 1-0 lead. One quickly became two, it was Leander Dendonka from the corner, whipped in just outside the six yard box. Goalkeeper can't really get there, can't get on the end of the header. It's just too, too much power from too close of range for Alex McCarthy to do much about that one. Would you believe it, two did become three, it was this time Pedro Neto getting to the byline, cutting it back. Somehow Raul Jimenez is good enough there to get himself a touch within the six yard box and finish beyond Alex McCarthy. Not the most convincing of finishes, but we will take that. Three before the half, yet again, three became four. It was Ross Buckley's run there, drawing in the left back uh, Perot before Pedro Neto took a touch, put it onto his better left foot and powered it past the goalkeeper into the right hand side. In at the near post. Got even better before half time. Ross Barkley had a shot which was parried, and Ruben Neves with a back heel back to Huang. That same tried and tested method, finessing it into the far corner. You will see Alex McCarthy does get a touch, but can't get there enough to stop that one. So back to back five nils. Surely that couldn't last too long, and it didn't. It was uh, Christian Eriksen, you, uh, you love to see it, of all the players we've conceded to this season, he's probably the one that I am the least upset about. A little bit of a Cruyff turn there, behind uh, his weak foot, and then powers it in the near top corner past Jose Sarr, very deserving goal scorer. We then got our first penalty of the season, which Tyler Roberts stepped up and put away, not the most convincing of penalties. I think. You probably question why the goalkeeper hasn't actually attempted to go for a dive or or, or anything there, uh, but we'll take that to make it 1-1. Then as Brentford were pushing for 
their lead back. It was Daniel Podence in behind on a counter-attack, finishing underneath the goalkeeper there, having gotten away from Sergi Canos, who did also give away the penalty. Not a good first half for Canos, but a great first half for Wolves up to now. 2-1 became 2-all. Connor Cody gave away a penalty, brought down Ivan Tony, who dusted himself off picked himself up and put it away. We did try to sort of put him off there a little bit with Jose Sarr dancing around a little bit into the second half and 2-all became 3-2 as the Red Sea parted for Tyler Roberts who was injured at this point to stroll on through. Two defenders go to cover the striker's run leaving Tyler Roberts all the space in the world to meander through and finish very similarly to that uh, Huang goal. Uh, in the first game. Having beaten Ipswich in the cup, we got drawn against Rotherham in the next round. A very similar looking story to start with, with this time it was Pedro Neto on the right wing, finding a bit of room, seeing the run from Ruben Neves over the far post. Just sneaks in, gets a toe to the ball, goalkeeper gets a touch but can't quite do enough from that range. And that was 1-0. One became two just after the half hour mark. The ball whipped in, Header from a corner, same old story, that man just outside the six yard box. I think we've cracked the FIFA corner code with, that. I almost said Connor Cody there, didn't I? The FIFA corner code, just have a big bloke just outside the six yard box, whip it into him, and he'll nod it in. Next, Johnny got down to the byline, picked out Pedro Neto's run, left hand volley, left foot volley I should say, underneath the goalkeeper there, putting us probably out of reach here, you'd like to think. 3-0 became 4-0 shortly after, a good counter-attack, and then, uh, look, it's not the nicest of looking goals, but I thought with Fabio Silva deputising here for Jimenez and Poulsen, it might be a good idea to get him a goal. Our clean sheet streak was then ended with some, let's call it, uh, unfortunate defending, to put it kindly. Max Kilman recovers the loose ball, and then in trying to play out from the back, plays it straight back to their striker, who lays one under Jose Sarr for 4-1. We did get the last laugh though, it was Huang yet again. Same old story, it was the finesse shot into the far bottom corner. We thought we had lost the ball, Huang won it back inside the box. Little fake shot because my thumbs went a bit nuts. Put it into a good spot and placed it into the bottom corner. So with two wins in the league and two wins in the cup, we are now looking at a league table that has us in 7th position, one point behind Arsenal, today's opponents, in a race for Europe that's really hotting up at this point. We're only four points behind a Champions League spot at this point, which would be absolutely incredible. The FA Cup has us uh, next time around uh, up against Southampton, which we'll decide later if that's the next game we see. More important things are on the horizon, and that is today's fixture hosting Arsenal. So coming off the Premier League winter break, which does fall at the end of January, we are looking at a fully fit squad and a lineup that looks like Jose Sarr in goal. Backline of Semedo, Connor Cody, Kilman and Eight Nuri. Midfield three of Dendonka holding with Barkley and Neves. On the right, Neto, left Wang and up front, Raul Jimenez. As for Arsenal, it's a little bit different of a squad. There's no Saka, there's no Emil Smith-Rowe, and for some reason Gabriel's playing left back. I'm not sure who Correa is either, which might just be showing my ineptitude as a football connoisseur. Interestingly, they have gone with Ramsdale in goal, which, if you remember the highlights from last time around, Burn Leno did have an absolute clangor, so I wonder if that did have an influence. Probably not, because it's FIFA and it was probably just random, but I like to think of the narrative, and let's go with that, maybe. So the lineup all up is Ramsdale and goal, Cedric Correa, Rob Holding, Gabriel across the back line, midfield of Bellarabi, Thomas Partey, Xhaka and Nkudu, and then up front they've got Martin Odegaard in behind Alex Lacazette, who's having an absolutely stunning season. Hopefully we can hold them off today. There were six goals last time around. Let's see how we go. With the players walking out here onto a beautiful Molyneux Stadium, I will just remind you again to please do leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel. It'll just help us the channel grow and, uh, and hopefully get more of a com community growing here. From memory, the last time we played Arsenal, which when I say from memory makes it sound like ages ago, but it was in the grand scheme of things, it was about th three days ago uh, in re like reality. But you know, when you work full time, 
and then come home and film stuff. Three days, like a lot happens. We've got Huang in behind early. Oh, and he's fired one across well. Hopefully that's a sign of things to come. We'll have a pop with Neves early. Yeah, that was, nothing was ever going to come of that one, but I am hoping for a more comfortable performance than the last time out against Arsenal. It was a very... Like the FIFA version of end-to-end -end football, which is just sort of you're always stretched, but so are they, which I guess might be how one would define end-to-end -end football. But uh, I, I don't care. It's retarded because it's FIFA and it's not really like real football. This might be though. Oh, that's a good effort from Ruben Neves. We've had a couple of goes early and we've probably had the territory in possession, which we'll hope is a good sign. Really stretching out there, Rams, they'll save that one. Whip in the corner, we've had so much success from this season and we've done it again. I don't think I've ever scored this many goals from corners in a season of FIFA. And somehow the first one I've ever done on YouTube, I've done recording even, What's that, eight goals from corners? Six, seven, eight goals from corners this season? Wild. Anyway, it is Raul Jimenez. It's 1-0. I think that might be his 13th or 14th Premier League goal of the season. Big man up front, really leading the line well. And he'll take that 1-0 lead. Here we go. It's 13 goals in 19 Premier League matches. It's outstanding. On top early, but... We've been on top in games of four and thrown lots of leads away, really. Hopefully this is one of, like that, uh, that run through January, where, oh god, as Ross Barkley's allowed to carry the ball over half the bloody pitch, and hang it up for Huang, Huang it up, no, didn't, that didn't work, the, the cross or the joke, really. I guess Huang it up. Oh, as if, damn it. Well, I was trying to talk about how to better do a joke, and instead, the real joke is my defending. Martin Odegaard getting the goal there, making it one all. Our defense was just at sixes and sevens. They've played through us like hot butter through knife. And that calm, cool, collected, that was the wrong order. Uh, performance that I was talking about. I wouldn't say hanging by a thread because I think it's gone now, but plenty of time left to hopefully continue on how we started the game and not so much uh, have the game resemble that last passage. As Eight Nuri gets in behind, hangs one up well, uh, but we, well, we've recovered it. Let's see if we can make anything of it though. That looked a bit like a foul to me, the way that he sort of sort of brutally won the ball back there. Not brutally, brutishly, maybe is what I'm trying to say. As they've got a man completely open, but Jose Sar to the rescue, and also maybe with a couple of broken wrists. It wasn't Kudu, wearing the number 15. Don't ask them to have a number 15. Am I nuts? Oh jeez, Jose Sar's done a number on himself there, hasn't he? bit of an Edison though, he's just just worn it and, and gets on. I hate to say it, but this is one of those games where we've sort of, uh, as we, that one peters out, we've sort of dominated the territory in possession again. Um, they might end up with more passes because they sort of just fire them around rapidly, but we do more with it. It's like that old argument as we swing in another corner, not successful this time. Uh, like that old argument of um, possession versus like effective football, like uh, I, I guess the most sort of popular might be like Atletico Madrid, how they've had success without dominating the ball, especially in a Spanish league that is so uh, focused on possession and, and technique and, and that sort of thing, and falling over a bit. That's Probably important, or well, seems like it's important. As Huang can't quite make his way around Correa there, who's done very well. He's come on the inside of him. 
Oh, and just about got his way through, but can't quite uh, pick a pass. Oh, and now Bellarabi's got some space, and he's got the pace to do lots with it. No, not that time. He's cut back inside. Good one, two there. And Lacazette's kept going and fired one right into the top corner. Really, I thought, I honestly thought I had that under control with, um, I think it was Max Kilman sort of, you know, not, I wouldn't call it close, but he was in front of him, keeping him sort of at bay. And I thought closing off the angles until Alex Lacazette produces possibly the purest strike of a football he has in his whole career. And it's 2-1 to the Arsenal. 21 goals in 23 matches for Lacazette is absurd. Did he get the assist for Odegaard as well? Odegaard, Odegaard, however you dang say it. So 2-1 at the break. I think where we struggle the most is when they beat our initial press and it's just them sort of zipping a few quick passes through our midfield and all of a sudden they're on our defense who even when you think you have it, you don't, basically. I'd like to say that was a fairly even first half, but uh, Arsenal probably, with the, the last 10 to 15 minutes there, probably just shaded, I guess. Let's hope that we can have a repeat of the start of the first half, start of the game, here as we uh, come into the second half. We've had, we have Ross Barkley here playing in Jimenez, who makes it to all as soon as the second half starts. Aaron Ramsdale has no idea what's going on. He's still thinking about the pie he had at halftime. Ross Barkley brings it through midfield as we planned it. Plays it through for Raul Jimenez. Fires one with his weak foot, having held off Correa well. Into the side netting. And maybe Ramsdale didn't move because he knew he had no chance with that. That is an absolute peach of a finish in, in the side netting there. Isn't it bizarre that... In FIFA, you have to watch out for Alex Lacazette instead of like... I think we did better against Mo Salah and Sadio Mane than we have against Alex Lacazette, which I don't mean as like, you know, a shot at Lacazette. I'm not saying he's a, he's a terrible footballer. Like he's, he's played for great clubs. He's played for France. He's... He's obviously got some talent as we fire one into Ramsdale's midriff there. It's possibly not the most... Oh, it's 3-2. It's just one of those moments where they just get too many bodies forward. They fire passes around with the most sublime control you'll ever see in a football game. Obviously, they did have more bodies forward than we did have back, but to... For Thomas Party to pick out that pass is possibly impossible to put the perfect weight on it by not looking whatsoever at any point in the move over at him, that Bellarabi there. is ridic It's ridiculous, really. Uh, but it's 3-2 to Arsenal. And this is exactly the kind of game I was talking about avoiding, where it's just end-to-end, -end, there's goals and goals and goals, and we were on level pegging for 10 minutes maybe as the score has disappeared from the top corner scorner <laughs> no that didn't work did it that did though and Martin Odegaard is away again Pedro Neto running in off the right wing has been a real oh that's a good effort has been a real weapon for us I think because I think that's where there's the sort of space is because they're playing a 4-3-3 I think on the the sort of channel between the left back defensive mid and left centre mid, that sort of triangle sort of you can see is where the space is. Still no Smithrow or Saka, but they've brought on Nathan Redmond, so they're still into the Englishman as we swing in a corner that is easily cleared. We'll try again as we recycle it. Oh, but there's no one really in a crossing position as we hit the bar and we can't finish the rebound. I guarantee you, if that is the other way around, there is some absolute garbage way that one of their players controls that and then fires it in easily. Man, as I said before, tackling bloody Martin Odegaard 
like solving a Rubik's Cube. Oh, the free kick, not too bad. Here comes the cavalry for the gunners. Man, that was poetic. Where did that come from? Uh, they've brought, uh, anyway, they've brought on, as they are through yet again with more pace. Uh, they've, oh, oh, wow. That was close. We'll bring on Daniel Potens. I was just trying to say that they brought on Bilotti, uh, who put the nail in the coffin uh, last time around, after I got distracted by my own uh, apparent mastering of the English language, and then also an almost calamitous, insane own goal. I suppose the good thing about the glitch in FIFA, where you currently can't see the score as Nathan Redmond's through and made it a score that you won't ever know. So 4-2 again, it becomes, it's Martin Odegaard playing a brilliant through ball here for Nathan Redmond, firing it across Jose Sar with his weak foot into what's well, something like the top corner, I guess. Yeah, let's, we'll, we'll call that the top corner. And a familiar story of not being able to tackle Arsenal players and uh, just them being clinical. Time running out here. Can maybe put together a decent attack here and have a chance at pulling level after that. No. Blocked easily. Cleared it away. And should we get one now, there's no way. Another corner as the clock winds down. Cleared away this time. And we've won the second header, but they've won the ball from that header. And that should do it, unless he'll let them get a fifth. So to start off the scoring, it was Raul Jimenez right on the 10 minute mark with a header from a corner, firing it past Ramsdale. And I think that might have been uh, Cedric on the, uh, on the line there. Another bullet header from a corner, just beats his man to it. And 1-0. About 10 minutes later, 1-0 became 1-all. It was Odegaard on the end of a through ball from Alex Lacazette, firing it past Jose Sarr. And our scrambling defence cannot get a foot on the ball, as Arsenal make it 1-all. 1-all became 2-all. Same story of just very slick passing and then an absolute rocket. No stopping that one from Jose Sarr's perspective. I thought I had it covered with Max Kilman. Uh, I guess in retrospect, maybe should have been a bit tighter to him. But then if he's tighter to him, the way this game went, he gets past him. Raul Jimenez then equalised just after the half. Ross Barkley brought the ball through midfield, played through Jimenez, who fired in what was, I think that makes his 14th of the season. Weak foot shot, uh, powered across the goals, into the far net, side netting. Ramsdale can't do anything. That was as good as it got for us as shortly thereafter Thomas Party picked out an unbelievable impossible pass that he never would do in real life for Bellarabi to have what really, I mean that camera angle doesn't do justice to how easy it was. It was a, a bit of a gimme. 3-2 became 4-2 as we pressed forward. They found space in behind as we couldn't get the ball off Bellotti, he laid it back for Odegaard, who first time plays a lovely little through ball. For Nathan Redmond to make it 4-2, and the exact same scoreline we uh, we lost to them in the first uh, fixture. So in the end, it is us losing ground in the race for Europe. As you can see here, if uh, Manchester City win their game in hand, they will be level with us, and... Not a head on goal difference somehow. I mean, depending on how much they win by, we've still got the goal difference on them despite the many big losses. I guess that uh, that Southampton result really helped us out. So next video will be the FA Cup game against Southampton as we chase some glory out of this season, which may end up being a little bit disappointing, it's looking like, potentially. For that game, we do have two fixtures in the Premier League. We've got, as you see on the right-hand side there, a game away at Tottenham followed by a game against Leicester, which really could end up deciding how uh, how close this race for Europe becomes. The more I think about it, a bit of a shit run of fixtures having played 
Arsenal, Spurs and Leicester, the three teams directly above us in a row. Would have liked it a bit broken up there, but beggars can't be choosers and losers can't play European football, I guess, really. But if you have made it this far, thank you very, very much for watching. Please do leave a like down below, subscribe if you're new around here, if you're enjoying the series, I really appreciate it. Leave a comment down below where, where you think we go from here and any other content you might like to see. I do have a couple of ideas, maybe some uh, experiment type things on FIFA where we uh, move players into different situations and see how they go. Let me know what you might think of that or, or any suggestions for that you might have maybe. Down in the description below are the socials, there's the Twitter, the Instagram and the Twitch. And until next time when we go again in search of FA Cup glory, peace.